Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and it's wonderful to see all of you here again. So this video was completely unplanned until I saw a video by Peter McKinnon titled How to Improve Your Photo in Five Seconds, where he just takes a photo into Photoshop, adds a little soft brush of light, and that creates this little hint of light into his photo. And much respect to Peter and his process. And for some reason, if he happens to see this, thank you for all that you do, Peter, and all the content that you make. But I will say, I think there's an easier way to do this, a faster way to do this, where you don't even have to take your photo out of Lightroom, and you'll even have more control and more creative control over your photo. Now, I might not have anyone in the background playing pool, but there could be a dog or two walking around at some point. So with that said, let's get started. So if you've seen any of my past content, this technique might not be new to you, but if you are new here and you end up liking the video or enjoying my content, you can hit the like button on the video or subscribe. No pressure though, only if you actually truly enjoy the content that I'm about to show you. So with that said, I have four quick examples that kind of show you different possibilities using this tool and why I think it's probably better than the one Peter showed you. So to make it easier, I'm going to show you a product photo that I took. And I don't have a whole lot of product photos, so it's not gonna replicate exactly what he did. But in the spirit of things, I just wanna show you as an example. So here's the product, it was a lens filter. I'm just gonna, it's already edited, and I'm gonna quickly zoom out by holding shift and scrolling to the left. I'm gonna go over here and add a radio filter. This is pretty much gonna be how we're replicating the same thing that Peter did. So I have a radio filter. I'm gonna make sure invert is selected. I'm gonna increase my feather by 100, and I'm gonna bring down the dehaze by about half. What that's gonna do is gonna create that glow of what a brush would do in Photoshop. And then I'm just gonna bring up the exposure by a decent amount. And now we have that source of light that kind of looks like what it did in Photoshop. Now, this particular image doesn't exactly need a source of light, but for example's sake, I could throw one up at the top. It makes it look like it's creating the glare on that filter. Now, I am a landscape photographer, so I have to show you a landscape photo using this technique. And this is gonna really open up your mind to what you can do with this particular tool. So in this image, I've already done it. So I have a big ovular radial filter here. And instead of making it circular like before, making it this way, we've almost created a long beam of light into our image. So let me delete this and you can see what it's doing to our image. So I'm gonna undo that and you can see basically that it is creating a source of light into our image. And over here, you can see some different settings. I have the dehaze down a little bit. I could bring that even more if I wanted to create more of a glow effect. I have the shadows up a bit. That kind of just gives us more detail in this particular image. And I have our exposure up. But all it's doing is just adding that light into our image. And it'll make a little bit more sense. I have another example. So if you're shooting street photography or some kind of city photography or something like that, this is another great example so I'm gonna zoom out again. And again, you can do that by holding shift and scrolling left or right. And I have another ovular light source that I've created. And the cool thing about this particular light source is there's already light in the image originally. So I just exacerbated that by creating this radial filter. And what's cool about this image is I'm actually going to warm up the light and add a little bit of red in, and it's gonna match the colors that are down here. And that's what's really cool about this tool is that you can actually change the color temperature or add a little bit of color into your light. And it just gives a more natural look, like as if the sun is reflecting off the bricks up there. And last but not least, let's take a look at what it would do to a portrait or concert photo. Now, I haven't shot people in a long time, so bear with me, this is a pretty old one. And I don't particularly think this photo needs this, but for example's sake, I want to show you anyways. So just gonna create a big light here light and like i said we're going to bring our dehaze down make sure it's inverted so it doesn't do that feather it by quite a bit bring up the exposure a little bit and then you would just pull it off the image like that and now we technically would have this glare in the top right part of the corner acting like a source of light onto your image. So I hope this four examples really showed you what you can do with this tool. It's super powerful. You can change the shape, you can add colors, you can decrease the amount really quickly and easily. And I think it's a lot more intuitive than taking a photo into Photoshop just to add that one little brush stroke. Peter, if you do happen to see this video again, mad respect, thank you for the content that you make. I just think that this way gives you a lot more creative control. So with that said, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe only if you want to. No pressure. 
I genuinely want people to follow me only if they truly enjoy the content. So with that said, I hope you guys have a good week and I will see you again on the next one. Thank you for watching. Oh, well. All right, that's it. We're done.